you know, it's corporations and businesses that create jobs. You know that old theory, trickle-down economics. That has been tried. That has failed. It has failed rather spectacularly. Hillary Clinton did back up from those comments as quickly as her PR flax could get to the media, but the damage, of course, was already done. The simmering discourse about not only jobs, but which political party creates more of them is something that will roll through the midterms and smack dab slap into the presidential election cycle. Both sides, of course, pat themselves on the back at winning this one. Let's stop with the patting and get to the people. Welcome back to Midpoint. Professor of Business at the University of Maryland, economist and national columnist Peter Morisi. And this gentleman holds a Ph.D. in economics from the University of Cal Berkeley, a consultant for the British Department of Energy and Climate Change, and author of the book Carbonomics, How to Fix the Climate and Charge It to OPEC. Steve Stoft joins us today. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Nice to be with you. Steve, I'm going to start with you first off. Steve, when we talk about creating jobs, I hold in my hot little hands here a number of different articles, all from the last five years. And they all say, without a doubt, every single one of them, that Democrats are the ones who create the most jobs and Republican claims about being tops in creating jobs are absolutely wrong. What's the truth from your perspective? Well, I think everyone agrees that jobs are, in fact, a big problem. But one party says the government should help out, and the other one says the government should butt out. So I plotted job creation by party. And for 85 years, it always got faster under the Democratic president and slower under the Republican. So why? The answer, for the answer, let me turn to Peter. He explained it clearly in 2009, just after Obama passed the stimulus package. <clears throat> Peter said, quote, we absolutely had to have a stimulus package. It's one leg of the stool. The other two legs of his job policy stool were fixing the bank and fixing the trade deficit. Peter also predicted that the stimulus would, quote, probably create two to 2.5 million jobs throughout the economy in things like construction, government service, retrofitting buildings, it will likely deal with about half of the unemployment created by the recession. His prediction was right on the money, and almost all economists now agree with his policy. But Republicans have never understood this. Not a single House Republican agreed with Peter when it came time to vote. Peter is brilliant, he's on your side, he's a good Republican, and he's trying to help Republicans fix their poor job record. All right, I tell you what, Stephen, let me interrupt for a moment. Peter, let me come to you. You have just had the table set for you more brilliantly than anybody possibly could uh, because it seems as if, again, you're the one who had the suggestions and nobody listened. Is it that simple? Uh, well, it's never that simple. Uh, we had to have stimulus at that point because the economy was in such terrible shape. But it's foolish to think that stimulus, again, would, would make the difference because now we're up against some of the structural problems that President Obama promised to fix but hasn't addressed such as the trade deficit with China. Uh, we really ought to be energy independent. We ought to build Keystone. But more important than that, we ought to be drilling for oil uh, offshore. If we did that, you know, we could easily create another 5 million jobs. But in terms of who creates more jobs, you know, circumstances matter. Uh, when Ronald Reagan took over, he had a lot of room to cut taxes that, frankly, Barack Obama didn't have. And they both took over in very similar situations. Uh, for Mr. Reagan, his unemployment peaked early in his first term at 10.8 percent, and for Mr. Obama, at about 10. Uh, for uh, Mr. Reagan, uh, the economy grew over the next 21 quarters at about oh four and a half percent. For Mr. Obama, at half that rate. Uh, it's not that tax cuts are so superior, uh, but he focused a great deal on structural impediments in the economy, uh, overregulation, things of that nature. Whereas Mr. Obama's been throwing up a lot of needless regulation. I'm all in favor of doing something about the banks, but not having them hire tens of thousands of compliance officers while they continue to trade, get in trouble, and pay more fines. So, you know, it's, it's much more complex than R versus D and blue versus red. Uh, but uh, the big problem here is I don't believe that the Republicans, when they take the Senate tomorrow, if they do, 
are going to bring a whole lot of new thinking to this. Ah, okay, and tell you what, Peter, hold there because that's a thought I want to follow up on. Peter Marisi and Stephen Stuff return after the break. And at 51 minutes after the hour, telling you like it is, wades into the nightmare that is the governor's race in Florida, where lies and dirt are as common as sunshine and Mickey Mouse. It's all right here on Midpoint.